And if we want to talk for a couple minutes before we get to our Adam Jude conversation, which was awesome, by the way, as spring training nears, because we're getting real, real close to pitchers and catchers reporting. In fact, we're days away from it now. So is spring training is very much on the horizon. We talk about a lot of this with Adam, but is there any storyline that you're looking at saying, hey, I'm really kind of itching to see this when the guys get down to Arizona and game start? Well, big question I have every spring training is who's going to seize the opportunity in spring and play really well right out of the gate when you're not in rhythm, when you're not when you're not used to being back and playing every single day. And for the most part, those are it's pitchers who will, who will jump out in, in spring training and they have a bit of an advantage on the hitters. But in this case, I just want to see, I kind of want to see some, some life here from Dom Kenzo. Not, I mean, it's not, sorry, life's not a very good word for that. I, I want to see Dom have a good spring training because I think people will be much more comfortable heading into the season if you and I are not sitting here and saying, well, Mitch Hanniger has got to play 130 games because that's the proven proven corner outfield bat in that spot for Dom. And we're, we're, we're coming off a, a season where Dom just destroyed the minor leagues and destroyed AAA, and he was the best hitter in the minor leagues. And you and I sat here on this podcast when that trade was made and said, Hey, look, like this is the piece. This was one of the centerpieces of this Paul Seawall trade because Dom Canzone has the upside to hit like this. Well, I think a lot of people would be a lot more comfortable, and I think you and I would be a lot more excited for Dom if he came out the spring training and started showing a little bit of what made him so special in the minors with a really high contact rate and a really good zone discipline, not a whole lot of swing and miss on top of hitting the ball as hard as probably about the top 80th percentile of baseball, which we know he can do. He's still young. I think people somehow got to realize that a little bit, but uh, for Dom is what he's been tabbed as, as a hitter, that it would be really nice to see him come out and have a strong spring right off the bat so people feel more comfortable about that corner outfield spot. And really, so the pressure is off of Mitch Hanniger as he's getting up there in age and he's continued to battle his health problems. Okay, well, we don't. the Mariners don't have to rely on Mitch as much if Dom Canzone comes out and has a good season, and I think a good start of that would be him performing in spring. What I don't hope for Dom is that he has a Mike Zanino 2015 spring. Is that the spring I remember correctly where him and Chris Bryant were, were dueling uh, spring training MVPs and then Mike Zanino ended up getting demoted to the minor leagues that year because he struggled so much. So I'm hoping that's not the case for Dom. And of course, we're biased to Dom because he came on here with the podcast with us and that was awesome and his interview was great. But I hope for the Mariners' sake and the lineup sake as well that Dom comes out and he just crushes it crushes it one last thing we also haven't seen much social media videos of dom he's not really an online person which again is very smart so it's just gonna be nice to see him like on a screen doing something which is mm-hmm. nice because we've gotten it from a lot of other guys i would not be shocked in any way shape or form to see dom canzone come out this year and hit 25 bombs i would not at all he's got the power to do it he's been in the big leagues for a little bit now he's got a whole off season of adjustments he's got his first full season with the new team or with his new organization coming up And he's just such a talented hitter. Like, you don't hit like that in the minors and hit like that in college and just and have none of it translate. I just I think he is such Mm. a breakout candidate. And if he can even just hit righties in year one, obviously you want to see him be hit both sides of the plate long term. But if in year one, he is truly going to platoon with Mitch, not only does that take so much pressure off Hanniger, where he only has to play half the games, they're against lefties, they'll probably get him some DH days every now and then. Where if Dom hits righties and he's and he like you said bat, barrels up the ball a decent amount hits for some power, that's all you can ask for from the guy. I would not be shocked at all to see Dom have twenty to twenty five bombs here in twenty twenty four. So if that starts out by a, have him having a really good spring, great, that'd be great. Yeah, we we just need to also remember as we get into spring spring training numbers aren't anything but it would be always nice to see some signs as they uh, as they roll along so what are you what what storyline are you looking out for now yeah i was just going to quickly say yeah. that well better to have a good spring than a bad spring obviously that is that is true yeah. so uh we probably buried the lead with this one i cannot wait to see bryce miller start throwing splitters to hitters we've just seen enough speaking of video two polar opposite guys like dom bless him he doesn't like to be on social media all that much posting videos. That's not who he is. Totally respect it. 
Bryce Miller has been on social media a lot saying, look at all these splitters I've been throwing. And by the way, they look fantastic. Now, he's mm. not facing live hitters. He's throwing bullpens. But I'm so ready to see it against live hitters because he's had the track man data up for it. And he's had just the pure video off the eye test to watch. It looks so good. Like it just basically table tops down. So to Does see it-, it now get implemented against hitters, I can't wait. It kind of rivals the excitement I had of watching Robbie Ray splitter last spring. Unfortunately, Robbie got hurt, so we didn't get to see the full fruition of that uh, of that splitter coming out for Robbie Ray last season. But it's a similar scenario, Lyle, for for the two pitchers. I mean, Robbie was essentially stuck with two pitches. You know, like, well, I need something else. I need a different sort of breaking pitch. So that's why he's breaking this out. Sort of the same reason for Bryce, and that's why we have the same level of excitement that you can play an explosive fastball with a pitch that moves like that. If you can't make a changeup work, if your slider isn't quite that pitch, then try the splitter. And the splitter seems to be working out stuff wise. The question is, is how is he going to command it? What percentage is he going to throw it? Is he going to leave it at 5%? Is he going to tick it up to 10%? I, I, I don't know what the balance of that pitch is and how comfortable Bryce is going to be using it here in year one, which again, you need to remember it's year one. So the pitch will probably not be perfect, but very exciting to see nonetheless in, in Bryce Miller's short spring training outings that he's going to get. I think it's I think it's exciting too because since Bryce started to have, you know, typical up and downs in his rookie year, we started to say, okay, you can't do this mid season, but I think come the off season, he's probably gonna need to add a third pitch. We said that mm-hmm. we said that for months now. We said I think a splitter would make a lot of sense. So not only did he do to a T what we had kind of spoke or tried to speak into existence, but it also looks really, really good. And you're right, like he doesn't have to throw it a ton. He can throw it 8 to 10% of the time. It could even be a little bit less. But the key is just to have hitters. Fool, like, you want to fool hitters with it, obviously. But just to keep hitters off balance a little bit, where they can't just sit on two pitches. They can't just sit on the fastball slider. They say there is something else we have to gear up for. I think it's going to help him a ton. He just he also needs another strikeout pitch. Because his, mm-hmm. his fastball is his strikeout pitch. He needs a second one. Elite mm-hmm. strikeout pitchers need multiple strikeout pitches. And even if your fastball continues to be your best pitch, if guys just sit on it, they'll continue to foul it back and it won't be ultra efficient. So looking forward to this edition of Bryce Miller, it's going to be, it's going to be super exciting. We can't wait. Speaking of the pitchers, speaking of spring training, we got into it with Adam Jude a lot before that. Let's take a quick pause. Talk to you about our friends over at Pagacha's pub 85 Over in Kirkland, you guys know it's our favorite spot to hang out. There's great food. There's great drinks. There's pool tables. There's dart boards. There's 22 TVs in that place. You want to go hang out with your friends. We cannot recommend it enough. And if you want to go and get some great drink specials, go during happy hour. It's Monday through Friday from 2 to 6 p.m. You can get $3 domestic beers, $3 Manny's or $4 Manny's and Blue Moons, $4 Mac and Jack's, $4 Wells and $4 House Wine. All that and a good time with your friends is over at Pagacha's Pub 85 in Kirkland. 